Good morning, everybody. I'm excited because today I'm gonna perm my hair. Not an actual perm, but it's gonna look like an actual perm because I'm using this thing I saw on TikTok, guys, all right? It's this really, really, really thin curling iron and I've been wanting to use it, but I've had like things I've had to do and I have a feeling it's gonna look terrible on me. The girls who do it on TikTok like always obviously end up looking freaking gorgeous. I no, I'm not gonna look like that, but I <laughs> want to still try it. And so I always had like something, like I had a video to film or a Zoom meeting or, you know, something that I couldn't have my hair looking super um, weird for. So I haven't used it, but my hair is clean and it's ready to be a curl. Look how skinny this is. I know this takes a long time because you have to do tiny bits of hair at a time and I have a lot of hair. So I do know this is gonna take quite a while. That's okay, it'll be fun. Alrighty guys, it's on. I'm gonna curl my hair piece by piece. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, I'm like kind of nervous. Here we go. Let's do the first piece and see how it looks. Oh my gosh, this is so thin. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that's a very small curl. Oh my goodness. leaving like this. I have to run my fingers through it. Like this is, this looks awful on me. Like I cannot pull this off. I feel like a lot of girls could pull this off. I cannot, I like Shirley Temple is shaking in her boots. But this ain't me. Ooh, there's one I missed. Okay, I'll fix that. Then I'm gonna run my fingers through it. Okay, I'm scared. Ugh. Oh, my fingers don't even wanna run through it. They're like, nah. Oh no, oh no. Oh, it's like ripping. Oh my God. Ow. Whoa, this is, Crazy. I don't understand. This looks so cute on everyone I've seen it on, and it just looks so weird on me. <gasps> oh my god, this is a disaster. <laughs> what do I, how do I, what do I do with this? You guys, like, what do I do? <laughs> this is not what I thought it would be at all. <laughs> oh no, this looks so bad. <gasps> Listen, every single girl I've seen do this, it looks amazing on. It looks incredible, like gorgeous, beautiful. Like all these girls on TikTok are using this curling iron, making their hair look amazing. And it just, it doesn't look right on me. I don't know if I was supposed to put my fingers through it, clearly not, but it didn't look good when I didn't do that either. So I need to wash my hair. Like I can't have it like this, this is not it. I just showed Corey and he said I look like the girl from Broad City, um, which she's a brilliant comedian, but I don't know what to do. Should I wash it out? Or should I just like live with this today? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go get dressed. I also need to change my tampon. This is making me leak. I'm so stressed that I'm leaking. Gotta go. Okay, I put it in a ponytail because it's just not so, I don't have time to shower because if I shower, then it's like I have to deal with like drying my hair and redoing my makeup and I don't wanna do all that. Like, so anyway, I'll shower later tonight. We're just in a pineapple ponytail right now. That's what we're going with right now. Oi, guys, I look like, why do I look so strange? I look so strange. This does not work on me. Let's do advent. Okay, so, <laughs> Hi, Moose. For today's advent of kindness, we have, it's the 15th, I think, today. Ooh, it's a cat. The mission today is if you have a pet, give them their favorite treat, play with them more than usual, and really spoil them with attention for a full day. No pet? The birds outside your house look hungry. That's cute. So I get to spoil you today, Mr. Moose. Yes, good boy. Now let's go to this. Today, ooh, we have a little penguin, a little penguin stained glass thingy is what we have today, so. Yeah. Yes, they gave me all these like stained glass things in this, but like, like I think the paint they gave me is regular paint. I don't think it's like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. And the most important thing of all is this. So we're on day three. Ooh, this is cute. So this is um, this. It says, it's called hashtag this is everything. It's a lip oil. Hmm, a sheer lip oil. What do you do like this? Like a lip gloss? 
I guess so. Cuties! Eric's on a walk with Flynn. Bad news, I think when I was pregnant, my teeth would chip. Yeah, that's a thing. Because the baby in your body is like needing calcium. So a lot of times when you're pregnant, your gums will bleed, your teeth will hurt because your body is literally sucking calcium out of your teeth and giving it to the baby so they can grow bones. That's a real thing. I'm not making that up. It actually happens. And so my teeth were weak because Flynn was stealing all my calcium. And so my, tip, my teeth would chip. One time when my molars chipped while I was pregnant, I was very pregnant and I needed to go get it filled and they couldn't give me Novocaine, obviously, because I was pregnant, and I couldn't lay down because every time I laid down on my back when I was pregnant, I would faint, like, immediately. The way Flynn was laying on a certain artery or something, I don't really know how that works, but however Flynn was positioned in my stomach and my uterus, when I laid on my back, he would press on something that made me faint. Anyway, I had to go get it fixed, so I got it fixed sitting up and with no drugs or anything, and they did a temporary filling, like, just, and they were like, you have to come back after you give birth so we can fix this. Well, I didn't. I didn't go back. And I think it fell out because my tooth hurts and it feels sharp. Looks like I'm gonna be going to the dentist soon, which is really scary because we don't go anywhere during this pandemic. We don't, we really don't see anyone. And um, the idea of sitting in a chair with um, someone leaning over my face scares me. But I think I need to go to the dentist because that's very sharp and it hurts. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. I can't get over this hair. This hair is wild. All right, it's time for this child to do his admin. And look, I washed my hair and blow dried it, so it's no longer curly. I couldn't handle it. It was giving me a headache and it, it was too much. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Number 15, okay? This is, this is the one today. It's very hard to get him to only open one, so. <gasps> oh, what a good Whoa. one, Flynn. How exciting. Did I have to see Wait, my what color is that? Burger. <gasps> oh, red card. Whoa! Red card. A red card. You want me to open it? Yeah. He likes them both today, guys. An exciting day. An red. orange bulldozer. That's a race a red car. Red race car. Dum. Dum. Is it like your truck? It's a Rachel truck. It does look like a Rachel truck. This is what Rachel's truck looks like. Grass. Whoa, it's jumping. Grass. Oh no. Grass. A crash. We just had some jumpy time on the couch and Eric was like, Flynn, we're gonna make mama some brownies. They're making me brownies. Look how cute. Good job, Flynn. Good job. Oh. Can I crack it like this? Yeah. Let's see, look. Stir it up. Good job. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I love chocolate. It's already triple chunk. Well, it's about to be quadruple. Perfect. So now, you take these and you this, you like drop them around on top, okay? Can you do that? No, 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 no. Put them on the, no, put them on the brownies. <laughs> good job. That's gonna be a good brownie right there. <laughs> Is that good? I think you should get one for that. And as your reward for helping me, sous chef? Thanks. Yeah, thanks for asking. Good. Yeah, none of those ones you can eat later. I'm going to make this little Santa Claus out of popsicle sticks. <laughs> now there's no instructions. Are you showing them? Yeah, that's a black popsicle stick. Black popsicle? Mm. Yeah, that's a red popsicle. Black popsicle. Yeah, red popsicle. Ta-da! Pretty dinky, but it was like a cheap little craft at Michael's and it came with no instructions. And I figured it out because I'm such an artsy crafty person, guys. That's cute! I mean, the back is a mess, but that's cute! 
Bobby, there's dandruff on these brownies. Powdered sugar. It's so beautiful. I love it. When can I eat them? It's for dinner. That's the best dinner. You see it's heart shaped? Thank you, yes. Did you know that's my grandma's pan? Mm -hmm. It got passed down to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi. Okay, I have so many things to say. <laughs> so I normally don't like to read too many comments because I'm very sensitive, which is funny that I have a job on the internet being a very sensitive person because you have to have a pretty thick skin. And so comments, I try to stay away from them just cause like, you know, I, if I ever read anything about someone I care a lot about that would upset me, I just, I think it would send me into a spiral and I'd like quit the internet. So all of the comments were so nice though. And so I read the comments on my vlog from yesterday to see what story time I should tell you tonight. and. There's a few things to say. One, I did read one, I guess you could consider it a mean comment, but like, it's also just kind of a fact, so it's not really that mean. But they basically, someone was like, why is one eyebrow always up? You messed up your makeup, like what's wrong with your face or something. I do have, I'm sure you guys have noticed, like all the time, especially when I'm talking about something and I get really excited, like this eyebrow goes up. And sometimes if I'm like stressed or sad or just like any heightened emotion, like this one will go up as I'm talking and I'll have like one eyebrow that goes up and I can't really control it. I can't really do it with the other side. <laughs> but as Miranda, you know, I'm like always like that. Um, I have a lot of control over that eyebrow, but if I'm excited or emotional or whatever, that eyebrow will go up. And it's actually something I would get screamed at for in college because I was a music major and I had this music voice teacher who was terrifying. She was a really good voice teacher in the sense that like she got me to be, did good work with me because I was terrified of her. So I practiced really hard. I never wanted to disappoint her because otherwise I would leave my lessons sobbing because she was so scary. She would scream at me for my eyebrow, like, and she'd be like, your eyebrow can't be up because it meant that I, something in my face was tense and she wanted me to be relaxed because the more relaxed you are, the better the sound is going to be that comes out. Like you can't be tense in order to have like a pure tone when you're singing or whatever. Whenever anyone when comments on my eyebrow going up, I always think about her and how she screamed at me multiple times about my eyebrow. And I remember a lesson, she made me stand nose to nose to a mirror for the entire lesson. I had to sing to a mirror like this close and watch and make sure my eyebrow didn't go up once. It wasn't allowed to go up at all or she would cancel my lesson. And I just remember like so many times I would leave lessons with her just sobbing because she would yell at me so much. <laughs> anyway, that's what that made me think of. So is my makeup bad? Yes. It always is. I don't know how to do makeup, but it's not bad makeup that my one eyebrow is usually always up. It's just how my eyebrows are. So for some reason, that's how my face expresses ex itself is one eyebrow just always goes up. Anyway, there's, there's so many things you guys want to know about. So it's really hard to know where to start. A lot of people wanted to know about like the religious school I went to and what it was like. And I have so many stories about that, but I think the most comments I saw said they wanted to see, or they wanted to hear about like dating stories and guy stories. And I have a very weird track record when it comes to guys because yeah it just was weird I, I've always been weird with guys and I do have a story I'm sure I've told it somewhere on the internet in a live stream or something, but I just think this story is so interesting. And I kind of touched on it the other night, but like didn't go into detail. So I thought I would tell you today. Okay, so there was this guy, I don't remember how old I was. It was right after college. So like, I don't remember how old I was. Anyway, there's this guy that a mutual friend, oh, I just remembered another story about a guy that was like, oh, total wiener. Oh, anyway, I had these friends that I worked with. They were like, you should date this guy. He's our friend, you guys would be good together. And I was like single and I don't know I, I wasn't good at dating or familiar with dating it makes me very uncomfortable and so they were like you should date our friend he's like super cool and I was like okay so we went on a singular date and I know I've told this story somewhere so some of you will remember it um, from some live stream or something but I went on a date with this guy this is so long ago and he was nice and it was like a nice date, but the one thing is that he was, he was Mormon and I was not. I, you know, we were very upfront about that at the beginning, about how he was Mormon and I was not Mormon. And I made it very clear I was not going to become a Mormon. I had no interest in becoming a Mormon. I knew about Mormonism and it just wasn't for me. My beliefs didn't align with that. And so I kind of knew like this probably wasn't gonna go anywhere, but like sometimes when people are religious, they're like religious, but they're not too religious. They don't like care too much if you like differ. And I didn't know how religious he was so I was like oh we'll just see we'll just see if we connect and we'll see what happens you never know we go to dinner and the dinner went well like he was nice and you know conversation was fine I guess one thing I just remember he was like freaking out excited about <laughs> no 
now. This is so embarrassing. But I remember him, like, the only thing I can really remember about that date, the dinner portion of the date, like, the conversation was fine, I guess. And, but he was really excited because he had made a really big deal about, he told me he was a virgin and he was, like, saving himself for marriage. And he made a big deal about it. And I was like, oh, me too. And just kind of, like, I casually was just like, oh, yeah. Like, to me, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I don't know why people make such a big deal about that. Like, who cares what someone else is choose to do with their sexuality like I think it's so weird that people focus on that and make a big deal of it like each individual person can decide when how what they're doing with their sex life and it's no one else's business except for the people that are part of their sex life so I always think that's a weird thing when people freak out about that stuff anyway so he had like made a big deal about how he was a virgin and I was like oh cool me too and he's like what and I just remember he like freaked out that I was a virgin and was like couldn't believe it and was like just shocked and just loved that and kept talking about how much he loved that I was a virgin and I was gonna wait till marriage and like all this stuff I was like that's weird that you care so much about that like shouldn't you care about like who I am as a person and like my personality more than like when I'm gonna have sex like that's kind of weird but whatever I thought that was weird and that's kind of the only thing I remember from that portion of the date but then he was like okay I have one more place I want to take you to and I was like okay let's see where we're gonna go we're gonna get ice cream or we're gonna go like listen to some jazz music I don't know it could be anything he takes me I was in Utah for something I must have been in Utah for sh like a Miranda show or I don't know what I was there for but I was there for something he took me to the Mormon temple like the like the big one and sorry I don't know the like the name of the big one in Salt Lake City but like he took me there and I was like what are we doing here? And he just kind of started, he's just like, let's go for a walk. So he just kind of walked around. I was like, maybe it's just cause it's pretty here. But then he started talking about being a Mormon and how I should be a Mormon. And then he showed me like the temple and started explaining like, this is such a sacred place and you can't go in there because you're not a Mormon. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, if you became a Mormon, you could go in there. And I was like, okay. I was like, what are you? what is going on? So it was like very clear he was trying to like entice me to like consider becoming a Mormon. This is our first date. Like I don't even know this guy. And our first interactions were basically being like, hey, I'm not Mormon. And he's like, I am Mormon. And I was like, all right, as long as that's clear. And that's just like, we're understanding that going into this. But he like made a big portion of the date to try to like get me to become a Mormon. And I was like, okay. Which no, no shade to that like religion or to those people. Like I don't feel any judgment towards him. I wasn't trying to tell him what he should do or how he should feel. I know it's part of that religion and kind of part of every religion to try to like convert as many people as you can to the religion you believe in but it was just weird that that's what he chose to do on our date I guess it was not weird because like if you're dating someone seriously that you like want to be with like you'd want I don't know anyway this is the weird part we're driving he was like so you're a performer and I was like yeah and he said he was a performer too he asked me like if I had any like boundaries of what types of like gigs I would accept and I was like like what do you mean and he's like like what would you say no to is there a job you would turn down and I I said yeah I don't think I would do a sex scene not because I'm not comfortable with like people doing sex scenes but just like I'm so uncomfortable with my own body the idea of like my body being filmed and also like a sex scene like I don't I just don't think I'd be comfortable with that and that's just me personally so I, it's not because I think it's wrong it's just because like I don't think I'd be comfortable and he's like so you would play a lesbian and I was like yeah he's like are you serious and I was like yeah I mean uh, and then I said one of my dream roles is Maureen and rent like I would love to play Maureen and he was like you would play a lesbian like you would kiss a woman and I was like yeah and he was like how would you explain that to your children someday and I was like I would say that I played a lesbian and that I was acting in a show and one of the jobs I had is I was a lesbian and I kissed a woman what do you mean how would I explain it I would explain it how I would explain any part and he was like I could never do that I could never play a homosexual person and, and like he was so offended and disgusted with me that I would be willing to play a lesbian like it blew his mind and I was like I think this date's done <laughs> Like that was it. Like no, like obviously like he dropped me off and it was like, we never even considered going out again. But it was like the weirdest date because it was like so not like first date type questions. It was like, are you a virgin? Oh good. Here, please become a Mormon. And also you're, you're disgusting because you would be willing to play a lesbian in a show. And so that was weird, but I have lots of 
Interesting stories. When I was about to tell that one, I was remembering a story of a guy I dated at Disneyland. That was a interesting experience. That was someone that like, I thought like maybe I liked and then he totally did me dirty. <laughs> So I've told parts of that story before, but I don't think I've ever told the whole story of that one before. But anyway, I have lots of weird stories like that. So tell me in the comments below tomorrow or any day, do you want me to tell another like dating story or um, I don't have any dating stories because I don't have a big track record because I kind of just like dated guys and I never really, I didn't have a boyfriend in high school and I didn't really have boyfriends after that. I had one very serious relationship and that ended and then I've just, I've been with Eric and Eric's my soulmate partner, like never felt a love like that in my whole life. But prior to that, like I just kind of like casually dated people sort of, but mostly was like friends with people and then we kind of would date. So I don't know, it was, I have, so I have minimal stories of dating times and then, but I have a lot of stories about like my school, a lot of people were wanting to know about that, like my religious school experience and ghost stories people wanted to know about. I could also tell you childhood stories. I don't know, like, I just don't know what to tell you. I have so many weird stories that I'm like, I'm surprised I haven't told every single story online. I probably have, honestly. I bet everyone's gonna be like, you already told us this story a million times, but I don't feel like I've ever told this much details. I'm always afraid the people that are involved in these stories are gonna like find out that I've talked about them and then like get their feelings hurt or something. And I don't wanna hurt anyone's feelings. Like even that guy, like I wish him well and I hope he's happy and like living his best life. Uh, I don't know where he is or what he's doing now, but that's the tea for today.